Great Discoveries and Amazing Adventures The Stories of Hidden Marvels and Lost Treasures By Claire Llewellyn A Hidden City in the Andes Between CE 1100 and 1500, the mighty Inca civilization flourished high up in the Andes Mountains of Peru in South America. In 1532, Spanish adventurers, known as conquistadores, conquerors, invaded the region and ransacked many Inca cities in search of gold. The Incas abandoned their other cities, which fell into ruin. One of these cities was Machu Picchu. I know of no place in the world which can compare with it. Hiram Bingham History Professor The Professor Hiram Bingham, born 1875, died 1956, a history professor at Yale University, studied South American history for many years. In 1911, during a visit to Lima, Peru, he came across an old book that told of the downfall of the Incas. He was inspired by the description of the Inca retreat and the ancient mountain cities that they had abandoned. Bingham decided to try to find the ancient Inca capital city. Machu Picchu Hiram Bingham's discovery of Machu Picchu brought him worldwide fame. He was the inspiration for the movie hero Indiana Jones. Possibly the greatest archaeological site in the Americas, Machu Picchu reveals fascinating facts about the Inca civilization and encourages many tourists to visit Peru. Ransacked If someone ransacked a place, he or she damaged it while looking for something. Machu Picchu stands on a remote ridge in the Andes Mountains around 8,200 feet, 2,500 meters, above sea level. The town, overlooked by towering peaks, was abandoned by the Incas. Amazingly, the Spanish never found it during the 300 years that Peru was part of the Spanish Empire. A Nerve-Wracking Climb Bingham led an expedition to Peru. He went with his party to Cusco in the foothills of the Andes. From there, they climbed into the Urubamba Gorge. On July 23, 1911, the group camped on the land of a local farmer, who told Bingham about ruins on top of a ridge. Bingham paid the farmer to guide him there, and the two set out one cold, drizzly morning. It was a nerve-wracking climb up steep, rocky slopes and along narrow mountain paths. At times, the professor had to crawl on his hands and knees across narrow bridges stretching over terrifying gorges. A Sensational Find At the top of the ridge, Bingham and the farmer rested in a hut, where locals told them about the nearby ruins. An 11-year-old boy escorted the professor past overgrown terraces to some white granite walls. Bingham saw palaces, temples, terraces, and towers. Astonishing! It was an ancient Inca city, known to locals as Machu Picchu. Bingham was overwhelmed. He led three additional expeditions to Machu Picchu over the next four years. Building Machu Picchu Built in 1450, Machu Picchu, or Old Mountain, is a spectacular, highly ordered city covering a site of around 3 square miles, 8 square kilometers. Its houses, temples, workshops, and other buildings were built using a simple design. Large granite blocks were shaped and sanded by hand until they fit together perfectly without needing mortar. 
There were no rounded arches or decorative carvings. On the outskirts of the city, the steep hillsides were terraced for farming, and fertile soil was brought up from the valley to grow sweet potatoes, sugarcane, yucca, and corn. Outskirts. The outskirts of a city or town are its outer edges, farthest away from the center. Ancient pictures in a hidden cave. In September 1940, four boys were walking in the grounds of Lascaux, an old mansion in southwest France. When their dog fell through a crack in some rocks, the boys went to rescue it and found that the hole led to a cavern. It would prove to be one of the most exciting archaeological discoveries of the 1900s. Finding the Cave The four teenage boys who discovered the cavern were Marcel Ravidat, Jacques Marcel, Georges Agnel, and Simon Coincaz. The next day, they returned to explore. They brought ropes, ladders, and lights with them and lowered themselves down through the hole. Their eyes gradually adjusted to the darkness. They saw that the walls of the cavern were covered in pictures. They could see images of horses, deer, and other animals. The boys knew they had made an amazing discovery. The insides of the Lascaux caves are covered with pictures. Some are painted, and others are engraved or drawn. The pictures were made around 17,000 years ago, during the early Stone Age, when people had not yet discovered metals and were using stone to make tools. A painting of cattle on the cave walls of Lascaux. Cave art. The artists who painted the pictures in Lascaux drew animals that were important to them. They might have thought that the paintings would help them while hunting. It must have been difficult to work in the dark, remote caves. The artists would have needed torches to see and ladders to reach the high ceilings. The paints they used were made from natural pigments, plant roots, charcoal, and sap, and were dabbed on using their fingers or with sticks or pads of moss or fur. The First Visitors News of the discovery traveled fast. People were soon flocking to explore the caves. In all, they found seven underground chambers connected by narrow passageways, with paintings and engravings on the ceilings and walls. A team of top archaeologists soon arrived at the caves. They were amazed by the sensational find. The paintings dated from around 15,000 BCE and were perfectly preserved. Archaeologists were worried about what to do with the caves. Europe was involved in World War II, so there was no spare money to spend on developing and protecting the site. They decided to seal the caves until after the war. Visits to the Cave The caves were open to the public in 1948, and thousands of people visited them. But it soon became clear that the visitors were having a harmful effect. The gases and water vapor in their breath dampened the cave walls and damaged the precious paintings. Attempts were made to protect them, but in 1963, it was decided to close the caves. Twenty years later, a life-size replica of the biggest cave was opened nearby. A group of tourists visit the replica cave. Precious Something that is precious has value and should be treated with care. The Caves of Lascaux The Caves of Lascaux were one of the great archaeological discoveries of the 1900s. The paintings of prehistoric animals captured the world's imagination. They offer us a glimpse of the lives of our ancestors in the distant past.
Silent Warriors Guard a Tomb. In 1974, a group of farmers were digging a well near the city of Xi'an in northern China when they stumbled across something surprising. Buried in the ground were several carved heads made out of pottery. The men took the statues home and informed the authorities. Soon an archaeologist arrived in Xi'an to study and learn more about the statues. He set up a tent in the middle of the field and began digging. It was not long before he made a sensational discovery. A terracotta warrior silently stands guard by the emperor's tomb. In the early civilizations, servants were often sentenced to death to serve their ruler in the afterlife. Rather than sacrifice an entire army, Emperor Qin was buried with a symbolic army of life-size terracotta soldiers. Authorities Authorities are the people in charge who have the power to make decisions or give orders. The Imperial Burial Site When archaeologist Yuan Zhangyi was sent to a field in northern China to investigate some buried figurines, he thought he would be there for around one week. But after digging in the ground for a few days, his team uncovered something. Extraordinary! It was a gigantic pit covering almost 3.5 acres, 14,300 square meters. It had a wooden roof made out of pine logs and a floor paved with brick, and it contained row upon row of life-size statues. They were an army of warriors, beautifully crafted out of baked clay known as terracotta. Yuan Zhangyi soon realized that this must be part of the burial site of Emperor Qin Shi Huangdi, born 259 BCE, died 210 BCE. He was the first emperor of China and was buried in a tomb in the area. The Emperor Emperor Qin Shi Huangdi was a major figure in Chinese history a leader, conqueror, and ruthless tyrant. He successfully united six warring states into the land of modern-day China. As soon as he became emperor, Qin ordered 700,000 slave laborers to begin working on the tomb in which he would one day be buried, and he commanded craftsmen to make a terracotta army to protect him in the afterlife. The Excavation Archaeologists continued digging at the site. In 1976, they found a second pit, and then two more pits. One of the pits was empty, but the others contained almost 8,000 statues. The archaeologists faced a huge task, and in order to protect the fragile figurines, they temporarily refilled the new pits. Since then, two of the pits have been excavated. The figurines have been displayed in Qin Shi Huangdi's museum, which was built near the site. It is now one of the greatest tourist attractions in the world. Qin Shi Huangdi, first emperor of China and founder of the Qin dynasty. Ruthless Someone who is ruthless shows no concern for other people and is very cruel. Making the Warriors Each warrior in the Terracotta Army is a unique individual and can be distinguished from all of the others. Their heads were made from one of around 12 different molds, and the eyes and noses were sculpted by hand. Beards, mustaches, hairstyles, and headgear helped create an individual appearance, while arms, legs, and armor added additional variety. After being fired, the figurines were painted and given bronze swords and wooden scabbards, cases, crossbows, and spears. 
Originally painted in bright colors, this terracotta archer has faded and lost his wooden crossbow. Other members of the army include officers, cavalrymen, and charioteers with chariots and mighty horses. Tall, well proportioned, and physically alert, the warriors look like they are ready for battle. Their faces are intelligent, resourceful, and sincere. This is an emperor's ideal army, one that would defend him to the death. Part of the Terracotta Army Terracotta Army The discovery of the Terracotta Warriors has brought a unique work of art to the world's attention. The intricate detail of the figurines provides historians with a rich source of information about the early years of the Chinese Empire. And the discovery of his army has provided Emperor Qin Shi Huangdi with the glory and immortality he desired.